Lots of long hours spent in the gym call for being well prepared, which is why over the last 15 years of twirling, I've carefully curated what I keep in my bag when I head to the gym. I'm Adeline Bebo, and today we're going to dive into what's in my baton bag. friend, aka an overpacker. So I really like to be prepared, but if your list or your baton bag is not as comprehensive as this, I don't want you to feel unprepared, but I hope that you have a mom friend in your life who might be able to have some extra stuff in their bag should you need it. I've broken down the contents of my baton bag into four separate categories to help break down what I use each part for. The first is baton and baton stuff. The second is accessories. The third category is electronics. And the fourth is a miscellaneous category that's filled with everything from everyday necessities to things I hope I only need in an emergency. I'm gonna start by unpacking this main compartment of my baton bag. I usually keep my batons in here as well as a couple other of my daily necessities. You can start with my twirling towels, of course. This one was my college major of America farewell towel. And this one was actually given to me by Jennifer Marcus at my very first world championship back in 2012. I always keep extra twirling towels in my bag because you never know when you might need it. And after a couple days, you always want to send them back to the laundry and put some fresh ones in there. So it's always good to have a few extras in case you don't get around to doing that. Next, I have this handy little bag. It's got all sorts of goodies in it. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up for you. The first thing in here is a mini hairbrush, of course. As soon as I get to practice, typically one of the first things that I do is put my hair up into my practice bun, which of course also requires some bobby pins and hair ties, which I keep in this little container, as well as a scrunchie, which is much softer on your hair. It can prevent all that breakage around the frame of your face, which can be incredibly important as I found later in my career. It's really important that I take better care of my hair and be really gentle with it. So that always helped me and having it in my bag always made me prepared for practice. Next in here, some hairspray, of course, to supplement, and this handy little shoe brush. This is one of my very favorite twirling gadgets. It's actually a steel bristled brush. I believe it's made for golf, but when the suede part of my jazz shoes can get a little cake with dirt from the gym floor, I just simply scrape it off and they're this new. So this is a very, very helpful tool that I've always had in my bag. And next is this liquid chalk. This is great for drying off your hands, especially in the summer humidity when it has a tendency to get a little slimy. Um, in this bag also is my tape bag. This has everything from black and white electrical tape, um, some canvas tape, some extra baton tape, some colored tape, just in case I'm having trouble seeing the baton against the ceiling, and some kinesio tape, which is very valuable for any kind of twirling injury. It can help support some muscles that aren't feeling well, and if you use it correctly, it has some really, really cool benefits, including improving your circulation. So I usually keep a roll of this in my baton bag with me at all times. Next up in this main compartment is my speaker bag. I keep it in this cushioned bag. It's cherry cloth and it's monogrammed. I actually got it from my friends in Japan on a trip that I took there several years back. And it's perfect for protecting my favorite speaker, which is the Bose Soundlink. I actually have the first edition and the third edition. And I really love these because not only are they super loud, they're loud enough to cover all the basketball players who are also usually practicing the gym with me, but they're portable and they're reliable. So I've had this one for many years. It's actually traveled the whole world with me and I absolutely love it. So it's also important that I take good care of it and keep it in this case, usually with its charger. Next, I have these warm-up tools. This is a leg roller. I use it to lengthen out my muscles before I practice. And this is one that I lay on to help stretch out my back a little bit before practice. These are all super important tools that I use for my warm-up routine to help me really get ready for practice. Next, I usually keep a mini water bottle in my bag. I like to bring fresh water with me every day from home, but in case I should forget it, this is a helpful tool to have to just simply refill in any kind of water fountain that the gym has, and that way I can be nice and hydrated. Last, but certainly not least, in my main compartment of my baton bag are my batons. I typically keep between four and five batons in my baton bag at any given time. I used to actually twirl shorter batons for two batons than I did for solo, so I used to have a couple different sizes in there as well. But nowadays, they're all just about the same size. I take them as identically as possible. 
That way, should one just feel a little weird or should the tape get messed up, I have spares ready to go. Next up, let's dive into this back compartment. This is full of lots of goodies. Uh, first, let's open up this. This is a back warmer. It actually is used to increase your sweat production, which for me actually just helps keep my back muscles warm. But I also have a specialized back warmer as well. This one is by Pastorelli. It's one of my very favorites, and it's one of my very favorite tools that I took away from rhythmic gymnastics. Keeping your back muscles is super warm, especially if I'm going to do a lot of back flexibility work in the beginning of practice, and then maybe not again until the end. I don't want my muscles get tense or cold in between, and that could eventually lead to injury. So protecting my back is super, super important, and these help me do that. I also keep these leg warmers in my baton bag as well. If you've ever seen me in a competition, it's likely that you've seen me warm up in these. They're my very, very favorite. I actually got them in Italy, as well as in France. So they're European leg warmers. I like them because they fit right over my tights or even my leggings at practice, and they keep my leg muscles nice and warm as I warm up and again, once again, prevent injury. Next up is this TheraBand. I actually use this to warm up my feet. I just point my toe through it and that creates a little bit of resistance to not only strengthen my calves, but get my toes nice and warmed up. Another strengthening tool that I love to keep in my baton bag are these one pound ankle weights. I wouldn't go much heavier than one pound because you can risk some injury or some hip flexor strain if too heavy, but I love to strap these on before I run an extra or a freestyle to help me build some endurance and stamina. To me, this next item is probably one of the most important in my entire baton bag besides the tons. They're my knee pads. I have two different styles. I usually like to keep both in there just in case. This style is by Bunheads. They have gel inserts and they're really thin and lightweight. Weight. They look just like knee pads. So they slip right on, they're not distracting, and they protect my knees from bruising and injury. I also keep these, which are similar to volleyball type knee pads. I believe they're also really gymnastics specified, but you can probably just get any pair at your local sporting goods store to help protect those knees. Next up are my twirling shoes. I typically keep between two and three pairs in my baton bag at any given time, just so I can be prepared for any kind of flooring that I'm encountered with. If the floor is a little bit slippery, I usually go to my Venturellis, which are an Italian brand. They're really grippy, which is wonderful, and they help prevent slipping on some stickier surfaces. I also really like these for throwing out on concrete. My favorite type of jazz shoe is actually called the Block Slipstream, but unfortunately they were discontinued a little while back, and so now I twirl into what's called a Block Flow. They have the same exact bottom as the Slipstream, but they have a little bit of a different top, which I don't mind at all because I'm just grateful to have these sturdy and durable bottoms. Now these might not look too durable to you, but this is what I call my trash pair. These are the pair that I keep in there in case I have to do any twirling outside that I don't want to twirl in my Venturellis in, or if the floor is just specific enough that these would work perfectly, I'm always grateful to have them in my bag and I didn't just toss them in the trash. Of course, in addition to my good pair of jazz shoes that I keep in my baton bag, I also keep these sneaker balls and smell good sachets in my jazz shoes because trust me, after lots of hard days of practice, they can really get to stinking up your baton bag, so it's important that we take care of them and either put uh, foot powder in them or put these handy little sachets in there. Of course, I always keep an extra pair of socks in my baton bag as well. You never know when you're going to wear right through a pair or if you wear flip flops to the gym. It's always important to throw on some socks for not only some extra padding, but to keep those jazz shoes nice and clean. Last but not least, let's crack open this front compartment and see what we've got in there. I always keep some extra deodorant and Febreze to go. Once again, especially with those baton shoes living in there constantly, it's always good to have these on hand. Next, I have these face wipes. I always, always keep these not only in my baton bag, but I also keep a set in my car for after practices. I do a lot of floor work, especially in my artistic twirl, dance twirl, and freestyle routines. So after rolling around on the gym floor, you really don't want that hanging out on your body. So I love to wipe down my face and my shoulders after practice to get nice and clean before I head home and shower. One of my baton bag must-haves is a manicure kit. Sure, twirlers might not have the best nails ever, but when you get hit right in the nail or you have a hangnail, there's nothing more in the way. So I love to keep a nail file as well as some nail clippers in there just to have on hand in case something happens. 
I also always keep an emergency first aid kit in my baton bag. It's got everything from band-aids to super glue for any kind of calluses that might have broken, spare contacts, um, hand sanitizer, chapstick, earplugs just in case, and hot hands, which are so, so helpful, especially in the winter time to help warm up those fingertips and make twirling just a little bit easier. Next up is an incredibly important practice and goal setting tool that I always keep on hand. It's my notebook and pen. Typically I'll spend a few minutes before practice goal setting, as well as just writing a few notes as to what I would like to accomplish in that practice session. Especially during the summertime when we're usually practicing for national competition, the days can be really long and they can get pretty boring. So setting little goals that you want to accomplish each day can not only keep you focused, but it will help you see a little progress along the way. Next up, I have another little compartment of electronics. I keep it in this hard-sided case so that in case my baton bag gets banged around, I know that my electronics will be kept safe. I have some Bluetooth earbuds in here. Of course, if I am in an environment in which I can't play music through my speaker, these come in handy. I also have a phone charger because I can't tell you how many times I get to the gym and my phone would be almost dead and I only have music for a few moments before practice and then it led to a really long and boring practice without music. So I always keep one of these in there. And this next tool is actually one of my secret weapons. I love this thing. It is a ceiling measuring tool. This one's by Bosch. What you do is you just simply set it on the ground on the, at the gym that you're at. You press the button and it sends a laser up and it tells you exactly how high the ceiling is. This is so helpful because sometimes some all white ceilings or ceilings with lots of obstacles in them can be kind of deceiving as to exactly how high they are. This will really help me gauge what kinds of tricks I can throw in the facility that I'm currently working in. Next up in this little pouch, I have a little contact mirror, usually to help me put my hair up. I've got some business cards, just in case I need to hand out some of my information. And I've got the all-important emergency dollars. I usually keep two or three dollars spare in my baton bag in case I'm at practice and I forget a water or there's not a water fountain and I need to get something out of the vending machine. And it can be so helpful if I just need a Gatorade every once in a while. So these emergency dollars have always come in handy. Well, that just about wraps up anything and everything I can stick in that baton bag but I want to know what you put in your baton bag. So be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below to let me know what you keep in your bag. And until next time, work hard and be bold.